the rain is falling. The fans are soaked. But here's the bottom line. We've got football at M&T Bank Stadium in Baltimore, Maryland. Today, we've got a good one on tap in the AFC North as it'll be the Pittsburgh Steelers taking on the Baltimore Ravens. And he won't quite make it to the 25. The Baltimore's offense set for this next possession. And they'll begin by running the option. And he'll hope that this is not a sign of what's in store as he has to fight just to get back to the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain on the game's first play. And it's second down now. Well, for that being an option play, there really weren't too many options available for him, were there? No, there weren't. And at least he was able to get back to the line of scrimmage so he didn't lose anything. But you're exactly right. Nowhere to go. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. He did a fine job there of not hitting it before the ball arrived, and I've got to tell you, you can often miss time that play because of the angles of approach. When you're going to get him, sometimes you panic as well and think, I've got to be there right now. Instead, in this case, timed it perfectly and knocked it free. On third down, Jackson. That's going deep for Bateman. And that's caught inside the 35. It's a big play there for Baltimore. 47 yards. Things are looking pretty darn good on this first drive. Aren't they came right out, set the tone, this time with a big pass play. And if the peek behind the curtain that they gave us or their game plan, today, I don't think that's going to be the last one we see. I think you're exactly right about that. They go play action now. Jackson. Oh, he shifts past him. And they move this all the way down to the nine. That would have broken play, but it ends up being a good play. The scramble goes for 20. I can't be sure how much of that was planned pre-snap, but it certainly opens up some avenues for their offense. And if he can stay a threat to break off those kind of runs, it'll pull defenders away from coverage and open up some choice throwing lanes for him moving forward. They'll run here with Edwards. And he'll take this from the nine down to about the seven. Here's where we need to see some tenacity from this defense because they've been pushed right down the field on this opening drive. They've got to find some way to push back, and that's a good first step. The line of scrimmage, the seven now on second and goal. On the option right is Jackson. The keeper gets him seven that time, and it'll lead to a third down. Driven it down the field nicely here on the opening drive, and now it's put up or shut up. No doubt about it, because to make that type of a drive and ultimately kick a field goal would feel very disappointing. But I'm just wondering, is the head coach thinking, is this four down territory? Might he go for it? Jackson's going to keep it. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Ravens touchdown. Lamar Jackson, it's a one-yard touchdown run, and the Ravens are on the board first here this afternoon. Well, that was all Lamar Jackson all the time on that drive, both through the air and in the end with the touchdown run. Yeah, how about him doing things a little bit on the reverse side there, Brandon, because he saw him up throwing the football and opened up the running lanes, and when he gets a little bit of a sliver, he's gone, and that's exactly what he did there. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. And the 
And a good return, able to get out across the 35 to the 36. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. So good field position for the Steelers as they come up first and 10 at their 36 yard line. They turn to Harris to begin the drive and he'll power his way forward for about four yards there on the first down carry. And hold on here because on that last run it looks like we have a player who was shaken up. Well, hopefully obviously nothing serious here. Medical staff though going to take a peek and we'll take a break. Second down and six now. Off play action. Pick it. That ball caught by the former Toledo Rocket, Deontay Johnson. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. The picket finding Johnson there. First down, Steelers. You always worry about those smaller receivers running through that gnarly patch of land in the middle of the field. But he did a really nice job there holding on to the football and protected himself as best he could while completing the play. And some room to run now. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. Good yardage as he rumbles for 24 at a first. They went with the nickel look defensively, so they had five defensive backs in there. Didn't help them stop the run. Yeah, I love that. The nickel look, five sets, five DBs. But what also happens then? You take a big body off the field in order to insert that guy. So you're taking a big off for a little. And oftentimes you can run the football effectively against that defense. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. Working out of the gun, it's Pickett. Caught on left side by Robinson. Two yards, good enough for a first. A pickup of two yards, and the Steelers first down. Pickett going to bootleg it. A quick throw there is incomplete. Had an open man that time. They ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. Now a second and ten. Pick it. Back to throw. And he'll go down. Right down at the 20-yard. Gets there as he goes down for a loss of seven. All about the offense so far on this drive, putting something sustained together. But the defense, they responded on that play. Second and manageable became third and long. The drive marching to the end zone is one play from stalling out. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And it's going to be incomplete. He was able to catch it there on the right sideline. Out of bounds, says the line judge. It's going to bring up fourth down. Well, how about the coverage we just saw break out on third down? Dive defense, blanketed the field with extra defensive backs and speed, unable to find an open hole to complete that pass. Boswell's kick is good. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's seven to three. So both teams come away with points on their opening drives. Now they still trail. They answered the touchdown with a field goal, but at least able to break that goose egg here early. And that is what's important, right? Because they didn't let that initial touchdown go unanswered. Took the ball themselves, moved it downfield, and put it through the post for three points. Game on. First 
After the successful field goal try, here's Boswell to send it away. And he brings us out past the 20 to the 24. Baltimore set to take over here for their second possession of the game. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out looking to repeat that Charles's defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent game. And the ball on the 30 here, second and four. A handoff running left. It's Hill. And he went nowhere. He'll lose yardage back to the 29. After one, seven, three, the score on EA Sports. Second quarter now from Baltimore. It's the Ravens in possession. Third and five. As they've got it as we resume action. They set up the screen to Hill. And he gets this one just shy of the 40 to mark him down at the 49. Ten yards there, good enough for a Raven first down. I like the play design there. They occupied the defense downfield. Everyone trying to account for someone. But unfortunately, they didn't account for the running back slipping out of the backfield. And he was absolutely unnoticed and wound up getting big yards on that play. And they run the option here on first and ten. Jackson hit, and he lost the football. Much like a running back going through the line, quarterbacks have to be aware of protecting the football as well. He left it exposed that time, wound up having it knocked free, but fortunately, had an alert teammate who was able to get it. Second and short now following the fumble. And a good run here as he'll rumble all the way down to the 40-yard line. A really nice effort that time. 12 yards on the keeper, picking up the first. How about that there? No frills, no additives, right? Nothing crazy. Just find a way to pick up the first down. A nice run right there. Operating out of Steeler territory now. Here's first and 10, right at the 40. That's about as exciting of a one-yard run as you're going to see. Finding a way to dodge that first would-be tackler, but again, just one yard out of it. Early down stuff to put this offense in a precarious position. We know the securing the point of attack, especially against the big-bodied guys in the middle of this D, has got to be priority one. Two minutes gone by, second quarter. And now Jackson will look to throw it. He finds Bateman over the middle. And they will only muster a yard here to the 38. Eighth play of the drive, forthcoming, and they need eight yards on third down. Now Jackson. And a throw there going to be incomplete. Sometimes the game is pretty simple. Put a few extra defensive backs on the field, give them nowhere to throw the football, force the incompletion, and get off the field on third down. So coming on now is the field goal unit. They're going to try for three, and he'll need all the leg he's got here. He had the distance, but it's no good. Wide to the right, and this will stay a four-point game. So Pittsburgh retakes the field for their second offensive possession. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want a drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them wanted to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it. Way better than the alternative, which is a pop. Yeah, but you met fan bases that were that, that were happy with that field goal. I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive in with a kick <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. Defensively, we always know that he is tough in run support, and I think the way that he gets there is he understands what an offense is going to do before the ball's even snapped. A great job of scouting prior to the game, 
then reading, reacting, and taking the right path to the ball carrier. Five yards on the carry there, and it leaves him with third and about six yards to go. It's not a huge breakaway run, but if your starting running back finishes the game with averages of five or six yards per touch, you'll take that every single time. The Ravens bring out an extra defensive back here on third. Pick it'll look to throw it here. And he will not be able to hang on to the contact. It's incomplete. The coverage strong, and now it's fourth down. From a defensive perspective, they had exactly what you want anytime they want to throw the football. There was pressure on the quarterback. They were getting after him, and they tightened down on the receivers and forced the incompletion. And he'll get this away into the icy winter air. That'll go as a punt of 32 yards. And the Ravens, they'll take over. Now the Baltimore offense heading back out onto the field. And the way their last drive ended, boy, it was frustrating. They had a pretty good drive going. It was sustained, and then it stalled out, Charles. And they missed the field goal and got nothing out of it. Is that insult to injury? because they had such a sustained drive, as you noted. So you know for the head coach. Here's a diving catch right side. That's a good way to start the drive. 17 yards and a first down. Jackson on first down. That's out to Hill, right side complete. And he'll be brought down right at the 45-yard line. So just three yards on the completion there, and it'll be second down. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers' tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field. That's for Bateman, and it's intercepted. And he'll return this ball across midfield to the 47-yard line. On first and 10, it's Pickett. And this throw a bit late as he couldn't reach back for it. That incompletion certainly slows things down a little bit and brings up a very important call for second and long. What do you do? Run and try and get some yardage and make it third manageable? Or challenge the coverage again, hoping for a bigger game? Second and 10. Pick it. He'll look to throw it. They'll try and set up the screen. It's complete. They do get a couple, but they'll be left staring at a third and eight coming up. Good reactions there defensively. That screen was a little slow in developing, and they shut that one down with little gain. They'll get to the line here, but remember, it's also third down. Now pick it. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he'll get this one down near the 20-yard line, just shy of the 20. How about 25 yards on third down? They'll take it. That's a play that will likely be forgotten when you talk about big moments in this game. But plays like this are critical to keep drives going. And if points result, we'll call this play significant. Now run straight ahead with Warren. Now the Steelers use the first of their three timeouts as it comes with 22 seconds to go here in half number one. Second and five. Here's Pickett. Toward the back corner of the end zone, but he could not get the feet down. This will wind up incomplete. A miss. I believe they buzzed down. They're going to take another look at this play with all reviews coming from the replay official here in the final two minutes of the half. point. 
and it's through, and that makes the lead 10-7. So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kick's away. The Ravens going to get one more drive here in this first half. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. 13 seconds, the time remaining in the half as they come up on first down. And they'll indeed start on the ground to run that clock. And he'll just push his way forward for a few as the clock will run. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. So we've hit halftime. Just a field goal separating these two teams at the break. As we send you down to Orlando where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports halftime report. Coach. this across the 20 but not much further as he's dropped at the 23 yard line the Steeler offense now with a football first here to begin the third quarter now this game it has obviously been all about the defense on both sides of the football which offense is going to break through here we'll see if they can do it on this drive Pickett leads the Steelers up here with a fresh set of downs at their own 23. Harris will start the drive out. And he'll power ahead, but only for about three yards. Second down coming up. In the first half, he was held in check on the ground, but despite that lack of production, they still have the lead. Yeah, and they've got to feel fortunate about that. If they could actually get production from their lead horse, that would help open up this offense and widen this margin, too. Ball at the 26, second and seven. They run again with Harris. Trying to keep those big legs churning, but he's going to go down in the backfield. Now they're staring at a third and eight. That last play backwards a yard. This defense is just flat getting after it. They have not given up much of anything in the run game. Case in point right there. They'll see about converting this third and eight. From the gun, here's Pickett. He was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. And so many times we look at the opening drive in the third quarter as a tone setter, and many coaches do emphasize it. And that's a strong performance there defensively to force incompletion, and more importantly, force a quick punting situation. The Steelers send out their punter now as he'll punt it away for the second time. So possession goes over here on the punt. And that will come the offense as they take over. The Ravens offense getting ready now for their first possession of the second half. And both of these defenses have been stifling these last few drives offensively. Just not able to get anything going. So what needs to change? I think a lot of the guys will go back and review, so to speak, because everyone has someone assigned to how did each play work? Okay, what did, what did we use that kind of worked for us during this game? Try and get back some of those plays, as well as the possibility of showing something you haven't shown already in this game and trying to change things up. Let's we'll see if they take the advice of Mr. Davis. And a nice gain and a, and a broken tackle along the way, and really we shouldn't be surprised, should we? That's what runners do, especially the best ones. They break tackles and gain extra yardage. Here's Jackson to throw. And that nearly intercepted. It's incomplete. Now remember, he had a pick earlier, but couldn't reel that one in. Well, he certainly thought he had a window to push that ball downfield, but as soon as he released the throw, the corner was there to slam that window shut. They come up now third and five following the incomplete pass. 
Jackson. Oh, into a sea of defenders and intercepted. Picked up by Mika Fitzpatrick. Pickett leads his Steelers up here with a fresh set of downs. Just shy of midfield at the 48. They'll start on the ground with Harris. And a good push there defensively as they stop him at the 48. A gain of just one. Well, they're hoping that the second half is better for him than the first half. They've got to find a way to get him going. He's a big part of their offense. From the 48-yard line, here's the second and nine. They'll try the right side with Harris. And he stopped immediately there. No gain on the play there, so that doesn't help. Now they're looking up at a third and nine situation. It's rare that a man his size can't at least push forward for a yard, but they stopped him there for nothing. You're talking about Tiny? You're talking about the little guy back tiny. there? That monster. Yeah, you're exactly right. And it takes a group effort to get a guy like that down and not let him find some space. The first guy in, he's got to take one for the team, right? Because he's just waiting there and holding on for everyone else to help him out. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. To win any route, you've got to break down the defender, and that's exactly what happened here on this really nicely executed curl route. Pick it now on first down. Flush to his right. And he can't find anywhere to go with it. And he goes down. Jadevian Clowney showing the explosiveness on the sack. Pressure comes up from all over when you're plotting a defensive strategy. On that particular play, it just came from the outside. So that complicates things a bit here. 18 yards to go now on second down. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. Floats one there, incomplete. I like his awareness in the pocket there. Nowhere to go with the football. So instead of forcing it to the sideline, he should just put this one into the harbor and live to fight another down without getting wet. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Pick it. He's going to loft one deep left side here. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. They decided the opportunity was there and launched a deep ball. But he was unable to get away from the defender. Couldn't create space, couldn't uncover at the end of the route, and that one lines up incomplete. The Steelers send out their punter now. They'll boot it away from about his 35. Yeah, yikes. Terrible kick headed straight for the sideline. Yeah, this punt will go out of bounds. I think it'll be inside the 25, and it will. Right at the 24-yard line is where they'll spot it. Baltimore about ready to go on offense. And here we are almost through three quarters of play, and this passing game still has not really found any kind of rhythm. Put it mildly, because they're not even over 100 yards yet. And in today's NFL, where it's a pass-first league, that is quite surprising. Not many teams patient enough to stick with the run. Everybody wants to advance the ball through the air. They've got to get their timing back. T.J. Watt, always a disruptor, there to blow that play up. Well, he's had success running the football in this one. Yeah, that's undeniable. But that time, the defense was on to it. And, partner, I think the more you see a play like this, the more they're able to diagnose it quicker and easier for them to defend it. I think you have to dress it up a little bit and show maybe some different formations and looks. It's a pickup of 12, and that'll set up a third down. Well, he's had the interception woes in this one, Charles, and that time a little bold to throw it into double coverage, but he beat the double coverage. Yeah, but I admire that he still will challenge defenders downfield, even though the ball's been in jeopardy a few times in this game. A nice ball there against multiple defenders, and they advance it downfield. And they'll try and run the option to pick it up. And he will not get there as they stop him short right around the 34-yard line. They'll get a couple of yards on the keeper, but it's going to lead to a fourth down. And if you like defensive football, focus on the defensive end on this play. He does everything exactly right. Reads the play and makes sure he spills it for a small gain. Now on fourth down, on is the punt team sending this one away. It'll wind up just a 35-yard punt, no return. And the Steelers are going on offense here, first and 10. Pittsburgh's offense now heading back out onto the field. We have not seen much on offense here from either side these last few drives. We've hit a wall, so to speak. 
And have hit it hard, haven't we? Because the defenses right now, they seem to be a step ahead, don't they? Beating them to the point of attack, beating them to the punch. These offensive guys are tinkering like crazy. What's it going to take to get back on track? Yeah, both sides searching for adjustments. We've seen these defenses make enough opportunistic plays to keep this one low scoring. Flying around, making plays on the ball, and we see yet another errant throw as a result. Here's Pickett on second down. A short one there, the fire move. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. We have played three quarters, but we'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Baltimore. It's been a very hotly contested game to this point, just a field goal separating these two teams as we get set for the fourth quarter. First and ten, here's Pickett. And here's Fryermuth again. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Another catch for him there. This one good for 11. First down. These guys are running offense like you drive. The pedal is down. Stomp down. How about that? Back-to-back -back completions. They are rolling. So much for being conservative and running that football. Pick it to throw on first down. Now look at this. They get the turnover they needed. It's intercepted. Picked off by Roquan Smith. And the Ravens are right back in this football game. The drive will start with an option going left. And he'll get this up past the 45 to the 47. It'll be a pickup of five on the keeper. It's second down. Oh, man, that wasn't far from breaking in a big way into the secondary. Read option, quarterback kept it. And while he didn't get a first down, he did get a nice chunk of yardage. Only a nice tackle prevented it from maybe going all the way. Now it's Jackson. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. Anytime a ball's thrown in the middle of the field that's popped up in the air, I expect someone to catch. It doesn't matter whether it's offense or defense because there's usually a great amount of bodies in that part of the field. In this case, no one came up with it. And this offense on third down today, they've hit at 50%, three of six to this point. This will be third and five. Throw caught by Flowers. And he will have a Ravens first down by about a yard as they find a way to convert there on third down and five. This is a nice job of just taking what the defense is going to give you on third down. You're not looking for a big play downfield. You just want to find something that can get you past the marker. They found it and were able to keep the drive moving. And motion left goes a tight end. Edwards now on first and ten. And they nearly sprung in that time as he takes this all the way down to the 47. Ten yards there, good enough for a Raven first down. Well, partner, I know this type of running back. I mean, this size, this intensity usually gets better as the game goes on. And I just tell you from experience, the first few quarters, oh, you're eager. You come running up there, I'm going to tackle this guy. By the fourth quarter, you're coming up and thinking about it. And D-line wearing down fourth quarter. Yeah, that's not a guy they want to see consistently. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. They're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. To throw is Jackson. No hesitation, goes right back to Likely. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. When this offense can get their tight ends involved, they can move the football. Here, a nice route, able to look it in, and picks up the first down. On first and ten, it's Jackson. But oh, he almost had his second pick of the game. Probably should have. Yeah, he's frustrated as it falls incomplete. Well, he's smart enough to avoid the taunting rule, but I'll guarantee he quietly has told them, you might want to stop coming after me downfield because I just broke up another pass and took away a big shot that you were trying to succeed with. On second down, Hill. And he'll go down right on the 
edge of the red zone following a pickup of about seven or eight. That was a really nice run there to bring up third and short. After the incompletion on first down, it's awfully nice to have a running back that you can hand it to and put you back in a good situation. Well, the elements, the crowd, the situation, this is NFL football at its best. Here's third down. Throwing is Jackson. And to find the open man, that's complete. And the Ravens are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. Edwards, not going anywhere. He'll lose a couple back to the six. Well, that's a group that's well aware of what's going on on the scoreboard right now. Excellent work by them to push them back. That defense, they want to make sure the worst they come out of this with is a field goal and a tie game. Second down, goal to go. Here's Jackson. And he is into the end zone for a Baltimore touchdown. Lamar Jackson with his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Ravens have moved out in front here in the fourth quarter. Tucker now to add the point after. And that makes it Touchdown. And able to get this out to the 25. So here's Pickett and the Steelers. Down 14-10. A little over 80 ticks to go. How will this thing pan out? We'll watch as they come up on first down. Looking to throw here, pick it. Finding Washington, and he's going to get out of bounds with the first down, so that's going to double their pleasure for sure. They get the first and save a timeout. That's what they need right now, get the first down, get out of bounds, stop the clock. Just playing smart football, understanding the situation, making the plays necessary, and making sure that clock stops at every opportunity. Pick it to throw. Connected with Johnson. And a six-yard gain gets him right around the 43. I don't know that those medium five-ish yard gains are going to do it right now. Probably should have dropped it, right? Yeah, that way you save more time on the clock. But I know receivers, they think they can catch it and break a tackle and turn it into a big gain. Now second and four. Now pick it. Pass complete to Harris. Now the Steelers use the first of their three timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the game. The towels are waving. Steeler fans on their feet. It's third down. Here's Pickett. That would call on the 
sideline. Did he stay in? Yes, he did. But hang on here. A penalty marker is on the field. The Charles are trying to protect this lead late. Those are the types of mistakes they could afford to go without. About the last thing you want to give them is help in completing a comeback, which is exactly what that penalty does. Two timeouts still available in this final minute. It's first and ten now. Pick it. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. Ooh, that's certainly not the worst thing. It stops the clock and lets your offense catch its breath and lets us exhale a little bit. Now I expect them to call a couple plays in the huddle, so they're ready if a tackle happens inbounds. And just over 30 seconds remain. Here's second and 10 now. Pick it back to throw. He's got his tight end fryer move right side. And he takes this down to about the two before going out of bounds. And I believe the referee's been buzzed. Yeah, they want to take another look at this call, and it's certainly a big one here late in a tight game. Well, this crowd trying to force a false start here. Third and inches. Here's Pickett. And this is going to be caught, but they'll say out of bounds. So it's incomplete. With that incompletion, reality is staring them right in the face. This entire game is down to the next snap. Here it is. Fourth and inches. They're going for it. This is Harris. And this is going to be nowhere close. Needed some inches and ended up losing yardage. They'll get neither the touchdown nor the first down. And that will force a turnover on downs. We've got to have two hands on the football here as they run on first down. Now the Steelers use the second of their three timeouts as they stop it with 22 ticks to go in the fourth. This, in all probability, another run here on second and eight. He's going to get it again. Just looking to get forward and protect the ball. Now the Steelers are going to use their third and final timeout. And as the two teams talk it over on their respective sidelines, we take a break. They are in need of six yards here if they hope to move the chains. On third down, here's Edwards. And he has the Ravens first down, and it would appear that that's going to be the one to do it. Well, this is one of those games where if you win it, it feels extra special. But to lose a close one like this, Charles, remember where they didn't score any points in the second half, that has to sting a bit more. Absolutely, and I really think that they're going to spend so much time pouring over this game film, trying to figure out where their calls went wrong, how they didn't execute on certain plays. They were so close. Yeah, this one's going to linger for a little while as they try and diagnose this loss. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn, and this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. The Ravens are victorious here as we say so long from Baltimore.